Hello, cherished listeners. Welcome to part two of our customer service training series. Once again, I'm your trainer, and I am Edmond Kofi Atachi. In the previous lesson, we understood that customers are the real bosses of the business, and we need to give them an overall positive impression, positive experience from our support representatives and our self-service systems. Meaning, all the touch points with the customer should be a wow effect. The second part of this series, we are looking at the three basic equations of customer satisfaction. The first equation is when the performance of a service is less than the expectation of the customer. So for example, if I'm interested in a book, it means I have an expectation of the book. Maybe I need the book to be delivered at a certain time and I need a certain experience from the delivery agent. But if that experience is not much, I become disappointed. This stage is what we call the customer dissatisfaction equation. It's a no, 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 no in customer service. The performance of the service, the agents, the service system or the product should not be less than the customer's expectation. This equation means the customer is not satisfied. But the next stage of the equation which moves away from the red is that when the performance is equal to the customer expectation, I need an internet service, I go online and make the application, and I'm expecting that by 12 noon, it should be installed and it should be working. Then exactly at 12 noon, I have my internet service working at the speed I need, maybe 20 Mbps for both upload and download. I'll be satisfied. I'm going to the bank to make a transaction and I'm expecting the money to be transferred to my account within the next 24 hours and it is done within the next 24 hours. I am satisfied. So when my expectation is met, I'm satisfied. So that is a satisfaction equation, which is the least we require in customer service. But satisfaction is not the only thing we can give a customer. We can actually go beyond customer satisfaction. That is to predict the expectation of a customer and do beyond that. So I'm applying for an internet service and I need it within one week. I make an application and I'm called that it could be done the same day. Then I go ahead, pay for the service, and the same day I have my service installed more than even the speed I'm looking for. Maybe I'm looking for 10 Mbps and I'm giving 20 Mbps and the service delivery, the touch points, the application was simple. The whole process was so impressive and I'm wowed. This is what we call the wow effect. This is what we call the stage of customer delight. When the customer is delighted in the service, the customer is more than satisfied. This gives me a higher score and it gives me potential repeat sales or repeat purchases. Why? Because the customer is delighted. This is the main goal of customer service, to have our customers delighted. Now, the question is, how do I know a customer's expectation in order to perform, to meet that expectation? or to go beyond that expectation. There is one key in predicting a customer's expectation in order to do beyond that expectation. And that key is empathy. So we look at the empathy spectrum, which starts with the stage of pity. When I pity someone, it means I'm sorry for the person. I don't understand what the person is going through. 
I'm not engaging the person enough. And it takes the least effort because I just know you're going through something and I'm sorry for you. That is the meaning of pity. But we can go beyond just pitying a customer. That is when we go to the stage of sympathy, where you feel for someone. Usually in our culture, and we sympathize with people who go through something like funerals. But it doesn't mean we are actually feeling what they are feeling with them. We are feeling for them, or that they are going through pain. And we are crying for them, but we are not with them. This one is a better understanding than just to be sorry for the person. But this one too is not accepted in customer service. The least we can do in customer service is empathy. Empathy is the least we can do in customer service, where we feel with the customer. We put ourselves in the shoes of the customer, feel what the customer feels, understand what the customer understands. And this one takes more effort and more engagement. Actively engaging the customer gives us a better understanding of the customer to know what exactly the customers need so that we can do that. Now, to predict a customer's expectation means you are able to put yourself in the shoes of the customer. From this stage of empathy, we can predict what the customer wants and meet it. So Edmund comes to me that he's interested in a reliable internet service. From my engagement with Edmund, I understand he uses it for online tutorials. It means he needs a good internet speed because these are going to be live video conferences. So quickly, I recommend the best solution that will meet what he wants. If I'm able to meet his expectation, he's satisfied. But when I put myself in his shoes and I know what he needs better, I can even do an upselling or a cross-selling because it's easy to do that because I understand what Edmund needs for his service. So good customer service comes when we are able to empathize with the customer, understand what the customer wants. There is an elderly woman who walks into a bank and you can see that this woman is very weak and there's a long queue with people standing that alone is a bad experience but the customer service agent looks at the woman understands her predicament and quickly approaches her and manages her specially that is understanding her there are lots of instances we can put ourselves in the shoes of others in some of the banks, we ask customers to fill forms in order to make uh, deposits and all that. Some of these agents took longer periods to understand and become conversant with the forms. You see how unfair it is when a customer walks in and we expect the customer to know how to fill the form. When a customer makes a mistake, we are angry. That is a bad customer service because when we put ourselves in the customer's shoes, we understand that when we were even learning how to fill the forms ourselves, we took a period of probation, sometimes three months to master it. And this is the first time some customers are not even very educated, uh, formally educated, that they can be able to fill the forms. We can help them out. Empathy makes you feel with the customer. But we can also go beyond empathy to the place of compassion. Compassion means I'm not only feeling with you, but I'm also moved by it. It takes the highest effort to be moved to solve the customer's issue. We shouldn't stop at empathy. We should go to the stage of compassion, where we are moved by compassion towards our customers. We don't just give them products. We give them customized solutions, solutions that are tailored to those particular customers. And we would not be only selling to customers but we'll be giving them solutions and we'll be giving them value instead of just selling what we have to sell this is the key to understanding the expectation of a customer it will be difficult to know someone's expectation without being in the shoes of the person so from the stage of empathy it will be easier 
to satisfy the customer. Thank you so much for this series. In our next series, we'll be looking at what are some of the key characteristics of an agent, things that we could develop, characters that we could develop, or attitudes that we need in order to meet these expectations if we are able to predict them. What do we need to build, to develop in, in order to meet these expectations? Stay tuned. Thank you.